It's a cold and snowy night outside, so let's make something warm and comforting inside. How about a warm crab and spinach dip with some baked herb pita chips and grilled rosemary focaccia. Okay, the first thing I want to do is run you through the ingredients for this dish, and it does look like uh, a fair amount of ingredients to go through, but it's actually not too, too bad once you get into it. First thing we're going to start with is the main element of this dish, the crab. So this is frozen crab, this is snow crab, but you could use a fresh crab if you wanted to, you could use a canned crab if you wanted to, and it doesn't particularly matter what kind of crab you use. You could use a Dungeness crab or an Alaskan king crab or a raw crab. It's really your preference in this Okay, dish. next ingredients. We have four different types of cheese. The main component of this dish being cream cheese. This is 250 grams of cream cheese, so it's one standard block of cream cheese. And it's always a good idea to leave this out for a couple of hours at room temperature in order for it to soften to incorporate it, to be able to incorporate it into the dish a little bit more easy. If you forget to leave it out uh, for a couple hours, you can always throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds to soften it. The next cheese we'll talk about, or next two cheeses we'll talk about, are two cheeses that will be put on the top of the dish when it goes in the oven. So this will bake over the top, get nice and bubbly and golden brown. We have a half a cup of Monterey Jack cheese here, just shredded, and we have a full cup of marble cheddar. Just one cautionary uh, on the cheese for the topping don't make the uh, cheese too strong. So something like an Emmenthal or something like an old cheddar might be a little bit too strong and overpower the crab. So just be a little bit careful on the cheese you select for the topping. The third cheese that we've got that's going to actually go in with the cream cheese and the crab is Parmesan. So we've got a half a cup of shredded or grated Parmesan here. This is fresh but you could use the powdered one. In order to loosen to. the uh, cream cheese up a little bit we've got a couple other ingredients to add to that. So this is a quarter cup of full fat mayonnaise. You could use a, a low fat mayonnaise if you prefer. Next to that is one full cup of full fat sour cream. And again, you can lose, use a lower fat version if you, if you okay, prefer. Okay, across the front of the cutting board here, we've got another uh, optional ingredient. So this is a cocktail sauce. This is the spicy version. So it's got hot horseradish in there. Now you could add this or you could omit it if you wanted to. I really quite like the flavor of it or you could actually go to a milder version of cocktail sauce. That is uh, one half cup. Beside that is a Worcestershire sauce. So Worcester, and we've got one full tablespoon of that. Beside that is Old Bay seasoning that obviously goes very well with crab. That is one full tablespoon of Old Bay. If you can't find Old Bay, you can always use something like a celery salt, or in a pinch, you could always use something like a glass rimmer this is for uh, Clamato juice, and it's basically a celery salt type base, but with a lot of salt in it. So if you're going to use that um, Clamato type base, make sure you monitor your salt content before you add any additional salt. All right, moving to the back of the cutting board, I've got a little bit of a herb assortment here. And uh, we're going to be using some fresh dill in this dish. And really, uh, if you don't like dill, you don't have to use it. It's another thing that you can delete from the recipe if you don't like the taste or flavor of dill. Uh, we're going to be using a, probably about a tablespoon of chopped dill in this recipe. Moving on, we have uh, baby spinach here. We've got two cups of loosely packed baby spinach. In a pinch, uh, this is obviously fresh, but you could use a frozen spinach if you prefer. Make sure if you're using a frozen spinach that you squeeze the moisture out of the frozen spinach. Now we're going to be chopping this uh, coarsely before we add it in and it's going to cook up nicely. I like the fresh spinach, it just gives a better, uh, better uh, flavor uh, in my mind and a better texture once it cooks in with that cream cheese. We're going to be using a quarter of a red bell pepper and we're going to dice that up finely. We're going to be using one shallot, obviously diced as well, and we're going to be using half of a, a fresh lemon. For uh, seasoning purposes, we've got some sea salt over here, we've got some black pepper. Those are the ingredients to make the crab dip. Let's talk about the breads we're going to be using for the garnish. So we're going to be using two different types of breads for the crab and spinach dip. We've got a pita bread that we're going to bake in the oven to make it crispy. We're going to brush that with some garlic oil. So just have some olive oil and chopped garlic standing by. A little bit of Italian seasoning is going to go on that and we'll probably use a little bit of our sea salt as well. For our rosemary focaccia, I just have a little uh, piece standing by here. We're going to be slicing that thinly and we're going to be grilling that with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of that garlic and olive oil as well. So we'll 
show you how we do that as well when we get to it. All right, let me clear off the cutting board and uh, we'll get ready to uh, combine these ingredients. Uh, we'll get this baking in the oven and while we have this baking, we'll move on to our bread garnishes. All right, let's go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, 250 grams of cream cheese that we've uh, got slightly softened as mentioned and we are going to use an electric hand mixer just to whip this. Now you could do this by hand if you wanted to but it's a little bit easier with the mixer so we're just going to blend this just on low just to make it a little bit easier to incorporate the rest of the ingredients. That looks good. Next thing we'll do is we'll grab our two other ingredients to add to that. The sour cream and the mayonnaise will be next. Here goes the sour cream. And our mayonnaise. Just give that a quick mix to combine that. Okay, so we're going to add our crab next. Again, remember if you're using a frozen crab, make sure that you squeeze it dry. Don't want to add too much additional liquid to this. Don't know if you can hear my cat in the background, but she likes crab. So we'll just fold that crab in. Okay, we'll start adding some of our vegetables. Let me just put that out of frame for a minute. Let's grab our shallot and our red pepper. So, proper way to uh, clean and core a pepper, take the top and the bottom off. I'm going to slice through the side. We're just going to run our knife carefully to take out the ribs. Like so. There's the core. You can just get rid of that. We're going to use about a quarter of this pepper. So I'll just use that much for this dish and we'll reserve the rest for another dish. So we want a fairly fine dice on this. So we're just going to cut it into a sort of a julienne strip. So watch your fingers, turn it the other way, make a little pile and go back the other way. That can go in the dish, just off camera. We'll grab our shallot, get that peeled. If you don't have shallots, you could use just a regular uh, red onion. If you don't have a red onion, use a regular white onion. You could also use uh, green onions in this dish if you wanted to. Pretty much whatever you have, just add some extra, extra flavor. Here's our shallot. We'll just pop that side off. And we're going to finally dice the shallot as well. So just down. And watch your fingers. And down. Into the bowl. And on the other half. Remember to curl your fingers out of the way. 
or you won't have any fingers at the end of the day. All right, as mentioned, we're going to use a half of a lemon. We'll just take our lemon, one half. Let's bring this back in for a second. Strain that through. Don't want any seeds in this. Here's our half lemon in. And just move that out of sight for a sec. Let's bring our spinach in. Again, we're just going to coarsely chop this baby spinach. You could leave it whole, it just makes it a little bit more difficult to uh, when you're dipping. So I prefer it just to be chopped a little bit. Just coarsely. It's obviously going to shrink down when it, the uh, dip cooks and gets hot. It's going to be quite nice. Let's bring that back in for a second. So now would be a good time to add our chopped dill. So we'll just grab a little bit here. Give it a bit of a chop. Smells great, love the smell of dill. Into the bowl. Okay, we're going to add our Parmesan cheese. We'll add our Worcestershire. We'll add our cocktail sauce. And we'll add our Old Bay seasoning. And that is it for the ingredients except for seasoning. Some cracked black pepper. I like lots of pepper in mine. Pepper to taste. A lot of pinch of uh, sea salt. And again, if you're going to be using that rimmer, that Clamato, or a Bloody Caesar a glass rimmer, be careful with the salt content. Alright, time to uh, mix this carefully. Just make sure everything is well incorporated. A little bit of um, cocktail sauce gives it a little bit of a nicer color as well. It just gives it a little bit of a reddish tint. That's looking pretty good. So we'll figure out what uh, kind of dish we want to put this in. There's a couple of different options and let me show you those options. Now if you've got a rather large party uh, that you're entertaining you can do this as one single casserole dish. But in my case, uh, I'm a bachelor, and uh, I'm probably going to divide this up into obviously more than one portion. Now, this can be an appetizer, or if you're naughty, this could be an entree size as well. So, we've got a few different styles of dishes here. Um, I prefer to have a shallower dish um, as opposed to a deeper dish. Now, you could obviously go to a larger size, deeper dish. But I prefer something like this type dish. I think you can see that in the frame, which is just a sort of a shallow type dish. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make 
two of the shallow style dishes. Now, if you want to do a smaller than that, and do individuals. So you see, if you had a family of four that wanted their own individual dishes, you could do small little dishes like this. So it's really up to you as to uh, how you want to go about serving yourself or your guests or your family. Okay, so we're going to try to divide this mixture between these two dishes. Just grab a spoon. And we'll just spoon that in here. Do the other dish. It's looking pretty good. So I've got two fairly equal portions there. I'll just smooth that out a little bit. And then the last step of this process is to add our cheese. So we've got our Monterey Jack and our marble cheddar. And uh, what we can do is we can uh, combine those now. Just get a little bit of a mixing bowl. So just toss those two cheeses together. Again, if you just wanted to use one cheese, like the marble cheddar, that's fine. As mentioned, you can pretty much use any cheese that you want to. Don't suggest mozzarella, it's probably a little bit too stringy. But you could do that, mozzarella or provolone. So I'm just going to add cheese to the top of this. Now we've got our oven preheated to 375 degrees. We are going to loosely cover this with foil for the initial cooking just to get this heated through and then we are going to remove the foil for the last 10 minutes of its baking so we can sort of brown up that cheese, gratiné that cheese a little bit on top. So that's looking pretty good. So. Let's get one of these in the oven, and the other one will go in the fridge, and that will be eaten another day. All right, the cheese and spinach dip is now in the uh, oven, and will bake at 375 for 20 minutes before we take the cover off and bake it for an additional 10 minutes. Okay, we've got our grill pan set on high, and it's probably going to set the smoke alarm off shortly, so let's work quickly. Just going to slice long slices of this. Uh, rosemary focaccia that I happen to have in the freezer. I'm just going to brush it with olive oil and garlic on one side and we're going to grill it. pita chips now. So I've just got two pieces of uh, pita bread here and all we're going to do is we are going to brush one or brush them with a little bit of that olive oil garlic mixture. And 
Then we're going to take a little bit of our sea salt, sprinkle that over the top. and a little bit of our Italian seasoning. Sprinkle that over the top a little bit, a little pinch here and there. And we're going to cut this probably better to use a chef knife. And we'll just cut this into some nice wedges. Good. Put these onto a baking sheet. Let's do one more here. So we're going to bake these at uh, 425, probably for about uh, three or four minutes, just until they get uh, a little bit uh, crispy and warmed through. You don't want them to to be limp. They're going to be obviously used to be. Uh, to dip that crab, so you want them to uh, to be fairly well toasted. So, just use your uh, your best judgment on that. All right. So, same thing. and onto a baking sheet. Okay, our crab and spinach dip has been in for 20 minutes. We're just going to remove that foil cover carefully and we're going to pop that back in the oven and we're going to uh, brown that cheese up. Okay guys, our crab dip, our crab and spinach dip is now out of the oven. So we'll let that rest and uh, firm up a little bit and uh, trust me, it's like lava at the moment. You do not want to try and eat this at this temperature as you'll burn the entire roof of your mouth. So while all of that is cooling down a little bit and setting up, we're going to put our pita chips in the little toaster oven and get those uh, nice and crispy. All right, final shot of the night. So our crab and spinach dip is now rested and uh, looking good. It's firmed up a little bit. We've got our baked uh, pita chips with herbs and sea salt all laid out. We've got our grilled rosemary focaccia. Got a little plate here, and if I can do this uh, with the other hand, we'll take a little scoop of our crab dip. Get the good cheesy part, and we'll just put that here on the plate so you can see the texture of it. You see that nice brightness of the spinach stays there. So there you go. Crab and spinach dip. Enjoy. Bon appetit.